Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for wanting my birthday to be about me and not my sister? I'm turning 16 in less than a month and my parents were all like, hey, let's throw you a party. You know, with my friends and family there to celebrate and everything. And honestly, I let myself get hyped about it. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But now, I'm kind of feeling like maybe I set myself up for disappointment. Let me break it down for you. I've got this little sister, Eva. She's seven. My parents really wanted another kid after I was born, but they struggled for a while. Then, Eva came along born premature and almost didn't make it. So, ever since then, my parents have been all about Ava. When she was a baby, they had to spend a ton of time with her. I get it, she needed them. But it didn't just stop when she got older. It's like everything still revolves around her. People used to tell me, oh don't worry, once she gets older, things will go back to normal. Spoiler alert, they never did. My parents always put Ava first. And I get it, she's younger, she needs more attention sometimes, but man, it's tough. Let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, all I wanted for Christmas was a PS5. I made a deal with my parents, if I saved up a certain amount of money, they'd cover the rest as my gift. I was so close, like the store had a drop nearby, and I had the cash ready to go. But then, out of nowhere, my mom tells me Ava needs a haircut, and they want to spoil her a little because she had to go to this developmental pediatrician, and she hates it. So, what happened to my PS5 money? Yeah, I went to pampering Ava. And me? I didn't get the PS5. Instead, I got some clothes and food stuff for Christmas. And when I say, food stuff, I mean like, the kind of stuff we all share, not even my favorite snacks or anything. Just, stuff. It's like I get it, you know? She's the baby, she needs extra care. But sometimes, it feels like I'm just here, on the sidelines, watching everything go down. My high school did an award ceremony in May to celebrate students who helped make the school better. I was given one for helping others in school and acting as a mentor of sorts. Of a school play was on the same day, and both of my parents chose to go to the school play, instead of the award ceremony. They didn't even remember to ask me about it when I got home. My birthdays have always been more aimed at something Ava will enjoy too. We do Chuck E. Cheese where I can bring a friend, or they hire a bounce house for family to come over, but always a smaller one which means I don't get to enjoy it because younger kids and small bounce house. The spotlight always goes to her at least once. She's blown out my birthday candles since she was two. It wasn't her that told our parents, it was the school and my mom had to bring her home early because of how bad it was. She never even has to ask for anything. Our parents will just jump to do whatever they can to make sure she's happy and smiling. Even the slightest frown and they are doing whatever it takes to change it to a smile. This year I really thought it would be different. All the plans were sounding really fun too. Then my parents found out Ava was being bullied in school and was having a rough time. They told me she wasn't looking forward to anything, including my party, and that they thought it would be nice to do something she could enjoy, and give her some of the spotlight on the day, where we assure her she's loved and wanted. I told them it was my birthday and I thought they wanted me to enjoy it. They told me they do, but Ava needs this, and that as her big brother I should be thinking about how to make her feel special. I told them I deserve to feel that way too. Then I told them if they were going to do this to me again, I was done. I told them not everything needs to be about Ava. That she might be their whole world. She might be their whole focus in life. But she is not mine. My parents got so mad at me. My grandpa, my dad's dad has tried to talk to my parents on my behalf before. He's probably the only adult member of my family who never found the whole thing cute and adorable. But they don't listen to him. I know he actually fought with my dad over me and how my parents were treating me versus Ava. It made no difference to anything. My friends are great. The hardest part with them is when I can only have a friend at my parties and I have to choose between them because we're all tight. They never blamed me for any of it though. They have also given me some really great birthday gifts and not all of them were stuff either sometimes they paid for me to go someplace cool with them. AITA for telling my wife that either she goes back to work or her adult kids start paying rent. I've been married to my wife for about five years now. When we tied the knot, her two kids from a previous marriage, Jason and Carla, became a big part of our lives. Jason, who's now 22 and Carla, who's 19, came with their own set of needs and expectations. Before we got married, we had a thorough discussion about what that would mean for our family dynamics and finances. 
My wife wanted to stay home with the kids until they graduated high school, and we agreed on a plan. She'd be a stay-at-home mom until they were done with school, then she'd have 18 months to start working part-time again. This would give us time to balance the finances and recover some of my savings. We even mapped out how we'd manage our budget to accommodate this plan. We knew there'd be cutting back on expenses, reducing certain luxuries and making it work on a tighter budget. I didn't foresee how expensive having two teenagers in the house would turn out to be. My bills soared from groceries to extracurriculars. Even with the child support from her ex and a bit of extra help, I found myself digging into my savings more than I'd anticipated. Despite the strain, it was crucial for my wife to be there for the kids until they graduated, so we made it work. Jason moved out for college after he graduated high school, and we agreed that Carla would have a year to decide whether she wanted to move out or enroll in nearby schools after she graduated. Well, here we are, and Carla's still living with us, not working or studying. Things recently took a turn. A few days ago, I walked into the kitchen and overheard my wife on the phone with Jason. She was telling him how thrilled she was that he was thinking of moving back in and how excited she was to have him home. As soon as she hung up, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. I hadn't been consulted before she made such a commitment. I confronted my wife saying, Hold up, you should have run that by me first before making any promises to Jason. I'm not against him coming back, but he needs to know what's expected of him in terms of contributing to the household expenses. My wife's response caught me off guard. She said she'd always told her kids they'd be welcome to return home anytime without worrying about expenses. I tried to reason with her. That's a nice sentiment, but you made that arrangement with your ex when you were married, you didn't make that arrangement with me if Jason's moving back in, he needs to contribute to groceries and utilities, and it wouldn't be fair for him to pay while Carla doesn't have to, so she should pitch in too. My wife firmly disagreed, insisting that her children shouldn't have to pay to live at home. She said they're her kids, and that's the way it should be. Our discussion heated up and I told her, if you feel so strongly about your kids not paying for their keep now that they're adults, maybe it's time for you to go back to work. Since then she's been sleeping in Jason's old room while we're still debating this issue. Her parents have weighed in too, siding with her and saying I shouldn't make her kids pay to live at home. Here's where things get tricky, they're not kids anymore. They're adults. They're not financially dependent minors. And it's not just about the principle of them contributing, it's about the practicalities. Over the past five years, I've been paying for renovations to our house so that both kids would have their own rooms. I split their monthly car insurance costs with their father, cover their clothing expenses, and handle all the streaming services they use. I pay for their medical insurance, food, snacks, spending money, prescriptions, doctor's appointments, and eyeglasses. Carla runs the air conditioning nonstop with her window open, despite our instructions to close it. They take long showers, and there's no central air, just window units that drive up the utility bills. There are costs associated with their hobbies, their phone payments, and the repairs to my car that Carla damaged before her father bought her a new one. The extra expenses have added up significantly, and we've had to cut costs elsewhere to manage it all. I've always been open to helping them get back on their feet if they ever needed to move back in due to dire circumstances. But this isn't a case of them being put out on the street. They're choosing to live at home, and it's reasonable for me to expect them to contribute to the household expenses. I've agreed to support them in tough times but they're not facing a crisis, they're just opting to stay put. I think this is a fair approach. I've done my part and we've made sacrifices to accommodate their needs. I want to support my wife and her kids, but it's essential that everyone pitches in to keep things balanced. This isn't about punishing them or being unreasonable, it's about maintaining financial stability and ensuring that we're not overburdened. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.